Stephen May. Mark Scott, everything you say is well and good, but I'm concerned your chairman at the ABC, Morris Newman, doesn't sing from the same song sheet. This is what Morris said about the press at the ASX AGM on September 24 last year. Quote, the general downturn in equity prices also saw our supervisory role come under attack, especially from the press. Much of our time has been spent separating truth from falsehood. Being held to account is one thing, but undeserved public vilification is something quite different. So much of it has been mischievous, misinformed and or just plain wrong. That's not a single rogue column he's talking about. The ABC chairman was slating the entire coverage of regulation by the broader business media. And Mark Scott's chairman isn't the only media heavy who passionately believes the media don't tell the truth. The following people have sued media colleagues for defamation in the Australian courts. John Laws, Alan Jones, Steve Price, Darren Hinch, Cole Allen, Mark Day, Kerry Packer, Piers Ackerman, Chris Anderson, Tony Bell, Peter Blunden, George Bushman, John Singleton, Richard Carlton, Eddie Maguire and even Fairfax Media Chairman Ron Walker. If the media is so good at spouting the truth or even just correcting mistakes, why have so many media luminaries hired Julian Burnside's wig-wearing colleagues <laughs> to litigate? If this debate is all about whether the media tells the truth, surely we should turn to the former long-serving editor and publisher of The Truth, Mark Day, who at 66 is the respected elder statesman of media commentary in Australia. Day wrote three columns for The Australian this millennium, detailing the outrageous distortions by the women's magazines in their coverage of Nicole Kidman. Day should know, given his wife Wendy has been Nicole's Australian publicist since 1987. I'm going to quote from his January 9, 2003 column. Quote, in the past year alone, Kidman faced a cancer scare from New Idea in January, signed the richest movie deal ever in Women's Day in February, went to hospital suffering a terrifying panic attack in New Idea in March, had a secret affair with Russell Crowe in Mexico in July, followed by a shocking love triangle involving a wild night with Ben Affleck, Crowe and Tobey Maguire in Women's Day in July, had a holiday from hell with former husband Tom Cruise and his new woman Penelope Cruz in New Idea in October, was involved in a sex scandal while promising to marry Crow in New Idea in November, dated Van Diesel in December while at the same time agreeing to an astonishing secret pact between Tom, Penelope and presumably the New Idea reporter who quoted every word directly. <laughs> Woo! All that in a year and not a skerrick of truth in any of it, not a jot. Unquote. Day concluded, and I quote again, James Packer and Kerry Stokes have bottom lines to protect, but to do so by abandoning any commitment to the truth is unconscionable. They should be ashamed. Now remember, Mark Day works for Rupert Murdoch, the king of trash and someone who, along with Kerry Packer, dominated Australia's magazine industries for decades until selling out in 1998. These days, the trash mags are controlled by private equity and Stokes, and Day still says, quote, the situation has not improved. Whilst James Packer exited ACP and Channel 9 finally last year, for much of the past decade it was he and Kerry Stokes who were also responsible for serving up complete primetime rubbish on Today Tonight and A Current Affair for 7 and 9 respectively. These are not just Wild West extremes of the Australian media, crazy bloggers buried in the internet ether. These are Australia's most widely watched TV shows and biggest selling magazines. And the powerful media families don't dish out the same treatment to each other. James Packer put out a press release on October 12, 1998, announcing his engagement to Kate Fisher was over. Big story. Not a word was reported in any Murdoch paper the following day, in keeping with a cosy agreement between Australia's two most powerful families not to report on each other's private lives. That's called hiding the truth, not reporting it. Sometimes these big media companies struggle with the truth when it comes to their own operations. Kerry Stokes' spin doctors confiscated my recorder at last year's Seven Network AGM and still to this day are refusing to provide a transcript or audio file of the public AGM. The truth is what was said. Why hide any formal record of it? Similarly, the latest edition of Private Eye 
the British magazine has three stories on the notorious phone tapping scandal by Rupert Murdoch's British tabloids. And Private Eye reveals that the $1.5 million settlement with Professional Footballers Association boss Gordon Taylor was approved by the Full News UK board, and that included James Murdoch. The Sun is still yet to report a single word on the scandal. It wantonly refuses to publish the truth. The Sun is prepared to happily break the law getting private information on others, but won't report police, newspaper and parliamentary revelations about its own dirty tactics. Even worse, Rupert Murdoch has just appointed Rebecca Wade CEO of his British newspapers when she was editor of the News of the World and The Sun when much of the illegal phone tapping was going on. One thing's for sure, beat-ups, concoctions and sensationalism sells. When Rupert Murdoch bought The Sun in 1969 for an initial £250,000, he gloated that turning a boring pro-Labor broadsheet into a screaming tabloid, left it delivering profits of £250,000 a week within six months. Forty years later, many a profitable untruth has been published by the world's biggest selling daily newspaper. I've had about five hours of exchanges with Rupert Murdoch at ten different News Corp shareholder meetings since 1999. <laughs> In 2007, he wouldn't even admit that he might never have been elected to the board of News Corporation at an AGM over the previous 55 years. In 2002, I ran for News Corp's board and Rupert completely censored the platform, refusing to even tell shareholders my age, something that hadn't happened in any of my other 35 public company board tilts. <laughs> That's Rupert for you, propagandist in chief to justify invading Iraq to promote democracy. But a fair election on the News Corp board with all candidates explaining themselves? Forget about it. My final observation is similar to Jonathan's, that the media is obsessed about scoops not the truth. As Peter Costello writes in his updated memoir to be released this week, quote, I was offered many exclusives by the media for the retirement announcement. The media offers favourable coverage for an exclusive. But if someone else gets the scoop, the rest of the media will often ignore it or punish them with a negative story. Indeed, The Age has produced a series of amazing exclusives this year about a 50% owned and Reserve Bank chaired note printing company paying millions in facilitation fees into bank accounts in offshore tax havens like the Bahamas. After the AWB revelations, this was an incredible story that the age has broken. Yet the rest of the media has barely followed it up because it's not their yarn. There's been a couple of pages in the Herald Sun on page 30 something and that's about it. If the media were fair to come about the truth, they would get behind the age's amazing revelations and go with it, but they're more interested in just finding their own scoop rather than grabbing and expanding on a very, very significant story. Similarly, the media is up in arms this week about business doing cash for access deals with political parties, yet the media are forever doing positive coverage for scoops deals with their own sources. And if one outlet gives positive coverage, the rival paper or TV show will do a hatchet job. It's so often got little to do with actually telling the public the truth. The truth really doesn't stand much of a chance with the media. If the trashy mags aren't making it up, someone else is illegally bugging you. Rupert Murdoch will personally censor any attempt to bring democracy to his news corp. Kerry Stokes won't even confirm what was said at his public company AGM. And if you have a go at any of these precious turkeys, they'll probably sue you for defamation or assault you live on national television. <laughs> now, we've barely touched on cash for comment. I'm going to leave Burnside to deal with that tawdry, sordid episode. How on earth Burnside can finish up on this side of the debate after prosecuting Jones and Laws over cash for comment is beyond me. Good luck, Julian. <laughs>